What's up GQ, this is Israel, I did something the last style bender. Today we're gonna to talk about anime and which ones crack my top five. I think after school, every kid watched um, Dragon Ball Z and then would come back to school the next day and then talk about what happened. I was part of that wave uh, during the Goku, Super Saiyan, you know, three era, Kid Buu, all that. For me, when I first really got into like anime was, I believe, episode 48 of Naruto Shonen Jump. And that was the um, Gaara versus Rock Lee fight. So I just got shown that by a friend on a CD. So I watched that fight and that was the one that got me hooked. And then I watched all 720 episodes after that. So you watch me when I fight Silver. When I, fight, when I fought Silver, um, I like to emulate sometimes a character or a theme for each of my fights. Not for the just walk out, but like for the fight itself. So when I fought Silver, I felt like it was two Taijutsu masters fighting. So my character was Rock Lee. So you see me in the intro when Bruce Buffer was announcing my name, I took the weights off and I went like that. Boom, and I hit a flip, I hit the pose. It was gangster. If you know, you know, it's like I played in my crowd. I wouldn't toot my own horn, but I'd say I was partially responsible for anime being kind of mainstream and in sports because I felt like once I did it, I started to see like NFL players, Olympians, and so on and so forth do their celebrations like anime style. And it was cool. I wouldn't say I paved the way, but I'd say I, I just expressed myself the way I wanted to and then people follow suit. Japanese subtitles are dubbed. Now, the weaves would be like, sub or get the fuck out. But I like to watch the fight scenes. Sometimes when they're, when they're doing the fight scenes, if I'm focusing on the subtitles, I'll miss the action. So that's the only reason I like dub. Look, if you like sub, you like sub. If you like dub, you like sub, dub. You don't have to like diss each other and make each other, put each other down or whatever. So hey, you like what you like. You want to be authentic. If you want to learn Japanese so you can listen to it, you know, authentically with no subtitles, go do that. No one's gonna stop you. But yeah, let people enjoy things. Spriggan. It was futuristic. I liked the suit he was in. Like it was like an overpowered suit, but it was a lot of blood. I like when I see anime and I see blood. I don't want you to sugarcoat it and, oh no, all this fighting's happening and there's no blood and no one dies. It's like, nah, I wanna see people's heads get ripped up, slice up. Don't sugarcoat it for me. Jutsu Kaisen. I'm still watching that, that's the thing. I'm still watching Jutsu Kaisen. So I haven't, I haven't been back on it for like maybe five months. What made it crack the top fives, again, was just the universe it was based in. They have a school for wizards or witches or sorcerers, I should say. And yeah, they're just battling like evil forces and demons in their own school and then put them against each other. But I like the fight scenes, the fight scenes, the monsters that they have in there. That's for me, like I said, is key in the top anime. It's just the fight scenes and the way it's executed. The fluidity, the fluidity of the animation. Death Note. How did I learn about Death Note? I don't remember, but definitely it got recommended to me by some people. And then I think I watched the first episode. He was at school, he found the note. And then slowly it just, it grew on me. It grew on me, and, but I like the, I love a good thriller. I love a good thriller. I love something that makes me think and makes me think outside the box. It makes me have to, you know, try and guess, play guess who. Just the way the Shinigami even like just appeared out of nowhere. And it was a really beautiful story. The way it was written was crafted very well and just kept me intrigued every episode. I said, I want to know what's next. So like I said, every fight I always have like a theme. And Robert's, I guess, fight name is the Reaper. So I was just like, I'm gonna show you who the real god of death is. So um, yeah, I did everything with intention when I when I when I stepped in there and I took his name. I wrote it in a death note. Like there's some there's some forces you don't tap into, but I like to tap into them once in a while. That was the theme of that fight, you know, the battle of the to see who the real god of death is. And I showed him who the god of death was. L was cool because I'm like, I guess I, I can be extroverted, but I'm, I'm very introverted. Like when I'm in my house, I feel more like L. I've got my spot on the couch. I've got this L couch that I just chill and watch TV or game or plot. I can just chill there and just be there for hours. You see L, was he? Actually, I'm kind of dressed like him right now, even with the pants. He's like right here, man. That's that pose, he's always just like, mm, interesting. And thinking, he's got tea. 
Yeah. Yeah, I just liked his demeanor, and he was really smart, like super genius. And the way he played, you know, Kira, mwah, finesse. Naruto. So Naruto is definitely one of my favorites as well because the lessons I learned from it as well, but the fight scenes, the fight scenes were really key in that one. And also the, 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 the whole space of, you know, the hidden leaf, leaf village, the Akatsuki gang, you know, the, the villains on there, they were also in depth and I said, backstory, you wanna talk about backstories? These guys will give you the back, back, backstory of, of these characters and then you get to really get invested in the character and know what made them who they are, why are they the way they are. And then they're relatable as well, the good guys and the bad guys. And there are so many, so many characters in Naruto, in Naruto that, that, you know, again, took me four years to watch 720 episodes and movies in between. You can get a lot from that series, but the main thing I really liked was the fight scenes. The fight scenes were cool. And also like the, the tactics, like when someone from the uh, Uchiha clan uses their Sharing Gun. When they put you in a Genjutsu and you're like, oh, like sometimes when Itachi would do it so, so subtly as well, you think you're watching the scene and before you know it, boom, this guy's behind the barrier and it's like, what the fuck, oh shit. I'm in a Mirage, I'm in a Genjutsu. And yeah, that kind of shit's gangster to me. It's been a while since I've practiced. And I remember I have a video of me doing it for the first time. It's an old video and I was really slow. Then you can go to the part where I'm just like, I was, I was on. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'll get back to it one day. <laughs> Avatar, okay. So some people might be like, oh, that's not even an anime. It wasn't made in Japan. Shut up. Doesn't matter where it was made. The style of animation is what makes anime. You understand? Doesn't matter if it was made in fucking Alaska or wherever, if it's a style, anime is a style. It doesn't have to be created in Japan for it to be anime. You hipsters need to just fuck off. But yeah, Avatar for me was, and is probably one of my favorite animes because of the lessons I learned, because of the lessons I learned from the story. Tough, I related to her story as well because of her upbringing, affluent, rich child who learned how to earthbend from badger moles. Even when um, Aang met, uh, what's his name, Guru Pikta, the lessons he got from him on learning how to unlock the avatar state and control it about his chakras, all seven chakras. That was one of the most key episodes in Avatar, it's really underrated. There's so much gems in that, and I feel like that's why it's one of the best ever. And also the fight scenes, you don't have to wait three episodes for a fucking fight scene to get going. You just, boom, and they hit it, and they start fighting and it's beautiful. And the fact that the animators as well used like actual, you know, martial arts styles and incorporated it with bending, like the way people earth bend, <laughs> like, oh, it's gangster. Honestly, I thought earth bending looked cool. Yeah, I always thought earth bending looked the coolest because the way Toph made it look, and some of the other earth benders as well. Ang always made the, the, what you call it, the air scooter look fun. But I'm, I mean, I'm the style bender, I like all styles, but I think earth bending was just, was gangster, yeah. So my, my, my nickname, my coin from um, the Avatar series, Aang was the protagonist, right? And he had to realize his destiny by mastering all the elements to become the Avatar. I felt like in my world, I'm player one, I've always seen it that way. And I felt like I had to master all the elements of martial arts to realize my destiny as the Avatar of this game. And I have, but now, you know, you have so many ops around, so I just have to, you know, keep being the avatar and stake that claim and it was very relatable. So that's why I coined the term the style bender because I mean, when, you, when you're in the, in the octagon, you have to be able to adapt to any style and I can do that. I do love anime because for me, I've always loved even video games as a kid, like Tekken. That, that's one thing that made me wanna, you know, I like to do cool shit. So I like to emulate the people I see in cartoons or anime and do it in real life. And I feel like I do a really good job. I'm a real ninja, like in real life, actually. So yeah, I take inspiration from these characters and I might incorporate it into a different fight because I feel like this makes sense for me. This is what, for this arc and this story, it makes sense for me. GQ, that was my top five anime, kind of. You can mix and match, but yeah. Don't believe the hype, you know? Right now, everyone still tries to clown on anime, but it's mainstream and people try and jump on. Just as trying to seem cool, but hey, you do you, woo-woo. Enjoy what you love and let people enjoy things. Mwah.